record to the call. Good morning. Today's daf Yomi is Pisa, um, Megillah daf Lamed Aleph. Today's daf Yomi is Megillah 31. And we're going to start on the bottom of Lamed Amma Beis. We're going to start on the bottom of 30B at the Mishnah. Says the Mishnah, the Pesach, Korim, the Parshas, Moadis. We're going through the Torah readings for each of the days of the holidays. And says the Mishnah, Mesech, Megillah, on, on the holiday of Pesach, we read the passages from Moado Shal Torah's Kohanim, the passage of the holidays from the book of Leviticus, uh, meaning to say in, in, in Vayikra, it's in Parshas Emor, we read about the holidays, and that's what we read on the last day of, on, on, on the holiday of Pesach. But Saras, on the holiday of Shavuos, we read Shiva Shavuos from Sefer Devarim. We read about, uh, we read about, from Parshas Re, we read about the holiday of Shavuos, which is called Atzeris in rabbinic literature. For Rosh Hashanah, on the holiday of Rosh Hashanah, we read from Emor again, we read Bechodesh Hashvi, Bechad Lachodesh, the seventh month on the first day of the month. And on Yom HaKippurim and on Yom Kippur, we read the passage of Achare Mos, the rituals of the Kohen Gadol on Yom Kippur. We read the passage of Achare Mos, the service that Aaron did in the temple. Yom Tov Rishon Shachag, on the first day of Sukkot, the Chag is called Sukkot and Rabbinic Literature. Korim Parshas Moados Shabbatoras Kohanim. We read the, again, we go back to reading Parshas Emor from Leviticus. We read about the holidays. Ubishar Koli Mosachag. And all the other days of the holiday, we read Bikar Bono Sachag. And all the other days of Sukkot, we read about the sacrifices that are brought that day. And the Gemara elsewhere tells us that because on Sukkot, we, each day of Sukkot has a different carbon that's brought, that's why we say full Hallel. On each of the days of Sukkot, be Hanukkah we read be Nisim. We read about the offerings at the dedication of the princes in the Mishkan when they were consecrating the Mishkan, and so too then therefore on Hanukkah that's what we read about. But Purim and on Purim we read by Yavo Amalek. We read about the passage of Amalek. Uh, that's this week's parsha. Yavo Amalek at the end of Parshas B'Shalach. Rosh Hashanah we read on Rosh Chodesh about. Uh, Rashi Chachichem, we read about your, the holidays uh, of Rosh Chodesh on Parshas Pinchas. The Ma'amados, on the time when the sacrifices were brought, we bring the, the Ma'amados means those people whose job it was to do prayers and to, to recite prayers and read Torah to accompany the sacrifices. What would they read? They would read B'mai Sebereshis. They would read about the story of the Genesis. Betanios on the fast days is a question about which fast days are we referring to. Now, is it referring to the fast days, the main fast days that we celebrate or we commemorate each year, like Asar Bateva, Shavasar Batamos, but that, or is it referring to a special fast day for a special occasion? So anyway, our mission is says something that we don't read on regular fast days. On 31a at the top, on the fast days, we read about the blessings and the curses. Rashi says from Parshas Bechukosai, the Tochacha, we call it the curses, because on fast day, we're reminded, Rashi says, that all the punishments in the world come because of sin. We don't, when we read the curses, we don't stop. But one person reads all the curses. One person reads all the curses. Besheni v'chamishi, meaning to say there's no break in the area. Besheni v'chamishi b'shabbos, and and b'shabbos mincha on Monday and Thursday, and on Shabbos by mincha corn kesidron. We read kesidron. What this means here, kesidron means in order. It means that we read, but we typically read that Shabbos. We read we read according to that calculation, but we only have three aliyot. So it's not like on regular Shabbos we have seven. But on, on Monday and Thursday, we read the parasha from Shabbos, but we only have three aliyos. Vain olim lahem ben achesh, and these don't count as part of the seven, these don't count as part of the seven uh, aliyos that we're going to have on Shabbos. And now the Gemara, the Mishra tells us why we have to read from the from the holiday on the holiday. As it says, Vayidavar Moshe, as Moadei Hashem al Bnei Yisrael, Moses spoke to uh, the holidays of God, to the children of Israel, which means mitzvah son, I mean, it's a mitzvah that everybody reads the holiday in the proper time, meaning reads about the holiday in the proper time. So therefore, we have to read about the holiday on holiday. 
on the holiday, and also we're supposed to darshan on it. Why is it so important that we're supposed to read about the holiday on the holiday? Because Kriya Satora is not just like an, a, a, like a, a lesson we're, we're teaching to you. It's not just a teaching lesson. It's actually an interactive spiritual experience. We're recreating the holiday. In our, in the, uh, we say Hashem comes whenever there's a million, Hashem is there. So we're recreating the spiritual experience of the holiday. That's the essence of why we have to read it on the, on the holiday, why we have to read about the holiday. Tana Rabban and the rabbis taught, says the Gemara, but Pesach, Karim, Parshish, Moados. On Karim, Pesach, we read about the festivals. Maftirin, meaning we read from Amor. And what's the Torah from? The Torah is from the Pesach Gilgo. It's from the first book of, uh, from the book of Joshua, where it talks about after the children of Israel came into the land of Canaan, they celebrated Karim, Pesach in in Gilgal, where Joshua, where they circumcised and they celebrated Pesach. We're gonna now refer to a lot of Haftorahs. So I wanna put a plug in that we're gonna be starting in February, every day a chapter of Tanakh, every day a chapter of Tanakh. And then God willing, once a week, our dear friend Rav Shaul will start also teaching uh, one chapter of the Tanakh in depth or a, a piece in depth. So in the Pesach we do, we do Gilgal, the Pesach Gilgal, that's what we read the first, after for the first, Say by in the nowadays you could try Yoma. Nowadays we have two days. Yoma Kama, the first day of Pesach is Gilgal. Is that the first day of Pesach is what about the half the story of the Pesach they celebrated at Gilgal? And the second day, Omar, or the second day of Pesach, the Pesach Yoshiahu. That's the Pesach King Yoshiahu. King Yoshiahu, when he found the Sefer Torah, it says they celebrated a Pesach like they had never celebrated since the time of Joshua. So we read that on the second day. Shari Mosa Pesach, all the other days of Pesach, Melake Tikore Minyanosha Pesach. We gather up the different places in the Torah where it refers to Pesach, and we read about Minyanosha Pesach, and we read about the, the from the having to do with the holiday. Mahi, what's what are the readings? So it says of Papa, Ma'afu Simon. The simon the way to remember it is Ma'afu. Rashi tells us what Ma'afu, <coughs> what Ma'afu stands for. First is from Parshas Po, Mishchu, the Mem is Mishchu, Kuchu, Chamzon, the Aleph is from Parshas Mishpatim, and Kesef Talvesami, the Pei is from Parshas Kisisa, Pesolacha, all these refer to Pesach. The Vav is from Vaidaber, Shebeba, Rosha, first of the Pesach Shemi. And then on the second day, Rashi tells us we read, again, go back into Emor Shor, O Pesav, O Eis. That's what Rav Papa says. Ma'afu. Simon Yom Tova Achron Shapesach. Yom Tova Achron Shapesach. Koren Mahiba Shalf. And the last day of Pesach, we read, this is the seventh day of Pesach. So in Chutzlaris, it's not really the last day, but we read Parashas Peshalf, this week's Parashah, because it has in it the Shira Sayam, the Song of the Sea. Umaftirin Bechabakuk. And we and we do that. Oh, no, I skipped the line. Mahiba Shal Maftirin Vaidabar Dabin. And we talk about, we do the Aftorah. From Vaidaber David, which is the song of David, which is this, which is the song of David. Uh, and the next day, what do we read? We read from Deuteronomy, Koabachar, which is a passage from Deuteronomy. It talks about the holidays and Maftirin on the eighth day of Pesach, Odayom, Odayom Benov Yamod, which is the messianic uh, prophecy from Isaiah, which talks about a child playing over a viper's nest. And this is also the Haftorah that, that many have the practice to read on Yom Ha'atzmut, on Israeli Independence Day. It talks about the Messianic era from Isaiah. Amr Mikre. But Abayi says, nowadays, the whole world has a practice to read Mesha. These are different. You know, so, uh, these are words that hint to, mnemonics that hint to the reading for, for nowadays. Mesha, Tura, Kadesh, the Kaspa, Psal, Bamidbara. So we, we, we said what these are already. Meshach uh, is from Mishchu. And then the and then Tura is from Shor Chasav Oez. Like Tura is like a shore, like an ox, and Kaddish Li And then and then in case of Talva and Psolcha, and then this Pesach Sheni, and then and then then we have um, the next one is Shalach, that is Vahib Shalach Paro, and then Kol Bukhor in the last day. So that's what Abai says is the practice today. About Saras, what do we read on our Saras? We read Shiva Shavuos. We read about the seven weeks, the mitzvah of the Omer, and Maftir and Bechabakuk. And we do that Torah from Habakuk, which talks about the prophecy of, of giving of the Torah. Other say no. 
that the first day of reading for Shavuos is the giving of the Torah at Sinai, Maftirim the Merkava. And Maftorah comes from the chariot of Ezekiel, which is like Sinai experience, and that it was all supernatural. Nowadays, we do just like that, but we do it the opposite. What does it mean that we do it the opposite? We say on the first day, Sinai, and the second day, we read from Deuteronomy. The Rosh Hashanah, what do we do on Rosh Hashanah? We read about on the seventh, in the seventh month. And the Torah comes from my, my son Ephraim is a precious child to me. And why are we reading that? Because we might have thought that God gave up on Ephraim because Ephraim has been exiled. So we're saying, no, just like Ephraim is precious to me, even though Ephraim sinned and is brought back, so too will be returned. Some say that, what's the reading? God remembered Sarah. Why, did, why, why do we read that in Rosh Hashanah? Well, we learned about that because we learned in the Gemara previously, not in our Masech, that God remembered Sarah on, on Rosh Hashanah. So therefore, that's the reason why we read Hashem Bokad Sarah on Rosh Hashanah. Because Chana and Sarah, Maftir and Bechana, we do the Haftorah from Chana, because Chana was also remembered on Rosh Hashanah. In the Dikotre Yome, but nowadays where we have two days of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Akama, Kiyesh Omen. The first day is Hashem Pakatasar, God remembered Sarah. The second day is the story of the Akedah, of the almost sacrifice of Isaac. We are so accustomed to being Akedah, part and parcel of the Rosh Hashanah service, but you see from here that is only according to the Yesh Omen and that it's the second day. And it's just because I am not just because nowadays, but according to the first opinion of the Gemara, no, we don't even read the Akedah on Rosh Hashanah. And, and what's the reason why we read it? It seems to be like we're just continuing on from Vashem Pokadah Sarah. What do we do on Yom Kippur? Yom Kippur, Koran Achremos, we read about uh, the, uh, the service of Aaron in the temple. We read the Torah from Isaiah, Kippur Mar Hashem, Rav Nisa, that, that, that God, Shochem Ad Kadosh, meaning to say we read about God's greatness, Uksiv Basrei, and what do we do afterwards? And what do we... Yeah, we read about Komar Rav Nisa from Isaiah, because that, that talks about how we repent. With the Mincha, what do we read by Mincha on Yom Kippur? Koirin Ba'arayos. We read about Mincha, about the sin, the sexual prohibitions. Umaftirin be Yonah. Now, the Torah comes from the book of Jonah. It comes from the book of Jonah. I'm a Rabbi Yochanan, Kol Makom, Shatamotze, Gurasa, Shalkadish Brachu, Atamotze, Anvat, Tenuto. We have in Rabbi Mintz's library a book with Chidushim on Meseras Megillah from Rabbi Yitzhak Elio and and he gives a shot on this. It says, wherever you find God's uh, greatness, you find God's humility. And he said, no, God, so he explains, Rabbi Lando explains that God's greatness is that he's willing to humble himself and deal with our, our petty problems. Covers that cost of the Torah, but this idea that wherever you find God's greatness, you find God's humility, this idea is written in the Torah. The Shino Ibn Avim repeating the prophets, Meshulah Shpiksuv, and it's again in the scripture. Cost of the Torah, it says in the Torah, Ki Hashem al Kichem, Hu Okea al Kim, Adonai Adonim. It says in the Torah, because Hashem, your God, is the God of all gods, the master of masters. Right afterwards, it says, does the judgment of an orphan and a widow, that even though God is God is still, God is still has Ashkacha over every orphan and every widow. Shino ibn Avim, it says, repeating the prophets, and right afterwards, it says, and that God takes care of the, the, the nation that is, that is low down. Meshuash Bixuvin is repeated in the in the in the writings because it says Solu Rochev Baravos Biyashimo. That he's exalted up high, the one who rides on the plains up high, his name is God. And right afterwards it says, Avi Somin Vadayan Almanos. God is the judge of the orphans and the Dayan and the judge of the widows. This verse, which we just cited from Tehillim, Solu Rochev Baravos Biyashimo. The last two words of that verse that we cited, Biyashimo, that's the reference to the idea that the that there are six columns in the Torah that you have to begin with this these letters. And these are the five letters here, Biyashimo, not counting the last rough, those are the five columns in the Torah scroll 
that don't begin with the letter Vav. The bed is obviously Bereshit. And the Mem at the end is, is Matovu. And in between, we have the, the other three. So those are the only, every other column of the Torah begins with a Vav. And the way to remember that is Biyashmo. Yom Tov Arishon Shachag, Korim Parashas Moados, Shabbatoras Kohanim. The first day of Sukkot, we read Parashas Moados of Leviticus. We read Parashas Moados of Leviticus. Um, we read from the book of, from basically from Emor, uh, about, the, about the story of Leviticus. And we did the Haftorah, Yine Yom Bao Hashem. And the Haftorah talks about uh, Zachariah's vision that God is going to destroy Gogol Magog. Nowadays we have two days of, of Sukkot. The next day, we also read the same verse again from Parshas Amor. What's Haftorah? We do the Haftorah from the prophecy of Solomon when all the people of Israel gather toward Solomon uh, to celebrate Sukkot. So that's what we're reading on Sukkot. And and that was at the building of the temple. Ushar, Kol Yamos, Achag, and all the other days of the festival. Korim the Karbanos Achag. Every day of Sukkot is a different Karban. So we read the other days, the Karbanos of the festival. Yom Tov Achron, Koran Kol Bechor. The last day of Sukkot, we read the passage called Kol Bechor, which is from Deuteronomy. And and which is Aser to Aser. We begin with Aser to Aser a little bit earlier because it's mitzvos. Uh, Mitzvahs for Chukim, and has all the laws and the commandments, and then we do Bechor. Umaftirin Vayik Chavos Shlomo. Now, Torah is from when Shlomo finished the dedication of the temple and he sent everybody home. Umachar, and the next day, on the second day of Yantif, of after Shmini Atzeres in the diaspora, what do they do? Bezos Abracha, they read Zos Abracha, Maftirin Vayamot Shlomo. Now, Torah is when Shlomo stood up from his prayer. Uh, after the dedication of the temple. They only read those Abracha, what about Bereshis? So you see, they didn't have Bereshis and Simchas Torah. They didn't mention Simchas Torah. They didn't have Simchas Torah then. It's not in the Gemara. They only started celebrating it later. So therefore, they don't refer to, they don't refer to the, the custom that we have today of reading of reading Parshas uh, Bereshis. And also, our Torah is not by Yamad Shlomo and Simchas Torah. Our Torah is from the book of Joshua. Let's say you have a Shabbos that comes on Chol Moed, Bein B'Pesach, Bein B'Sukkos, whether it's Pesach or Sukkos, Mikra Karinan. What do we read? We read Re'eyata. We read from Parashas Kisisa because, why? Because that mentions Shabbos, mentions Yantif, and mentions Chol Moed. The Avtura is B'Pesach, and the Avtura that we read on Pesach, Shabbos, Chol Moed, is Hatzamos Yeveshos. The dry bones. What are these dry bones a reference to? This is a reference. What, what, what is this a reference to? The dry bones. She yotzim in Mitzrayim with me'akets. Rashi says that, and this refers to our parsha, parshas Hashavua, parshas B'shalach. First of the people who left Egypt before they were supposed to. Who are these people? The people from the tribe of Ephraim, and they went out through the way of the push them, it was only a three-day journey. They said, enough with these Egyptians. We're going out on our own. Moshe Rabbeinu, the Moshe Rabbeinu didn't tell them to go out. They left before Moshe Rabbeinu. They said, we could do an armed revolt. And those people were cut down by the push them. But, but Ezekiel looks at there, and Rashi refers to it on our parasha, where he says, Yoshe Falasha, as Rashi says, refers to that. So then what happens, Ezekiel looks at those bones, and he says, these dry bones will come back to life. Even those people were cut down, they will be resurrected. They had, uh, they had the, the she'ifa for, for going to the land of Israel. And the sukkahs, what do we read after our four from beyond Gog, Gog, and Magog? That Gog and Magog uh, are going to have the end of the war in the end of days. The Hanukkah, what do we read on Hanukkah? We read about the Nisim. Hanukkah, we read about the dedication of the, uh, the Karbanos that were dedicating the altar. And what and on the Shabbos of Hanukkah, Maftir and Benaris and Zachariah, we talk about the prophecy of Zachariah. Zachariah's menorah, where you have the special menorah, which is the bowls of oil next to it, automatically flowing in from the olive tree into the bowls, into the menorah. The mikvah, Shte Shabbos. So we have two weeks of Hanukkah, two Shabbosos, Kamaisa, Benaris, and Zachariah, and Basraisa, Benaris, Shomo. The first one we read about the menorah of Zachariah, and the second one we read about the Benaris of Shomo.
But Purim, we learned in the Mishnah, what do we do? And, and the Mishnah says, in Purim, we read by Yavu Amalek, we read about the passage of Amalek, Rashi Chadashim, Rashi Chachachem. And on Rosh Chodesh, we read about, about Rosh Chodesh. Rosh Chodesh Chal Yos B'Shabbos. What do we read when Rosh Chodesh comes on Shabbos? Vayom Chodesh B'Chod Show. We read the special Haftorah from Isaiah 66, the beautiful Haftorah about Chodesh B'Chod Show, Shabbos B'Shabbos. And let's say Chal Yos B'Echa B'Shabbos, let's say Rosh Chodesh comes on a Sunday. And then we read again another beautiful Haftorah, Miesmo. We read the Haftorah on Shabbos. Maftirin Vayomer Lo Yonasan Machar Chodesh, where Jonathan tells David a secret sign. Now they're going to be able to remember to get to get David to safety, and Jonathan gives up his kingdom to help David. This might be uh, usually we don't read Avtor about the next day. This might be the only example I can think of. We're reading Avtor about something that happens the next day. Usually we read about what happens that day. Says the Gemara Amar Afuna. What about the Rosh Chodesh Av? Rosh Chodesh Av shkaliyos b'Shabbos. When Rosh Chodesh Av comes on the Shabbos, Mafirin Chachechem Umoadechem Sanan Nafshi. Are you aware with the Torah from Isaiah chapter one verse fourteen? God says, "I despise your holidays. They became to me a burden." This is so ironic because the whole day, the whole Gemara, the whole Daf, we're talking about the tremendous uh, holidays we have and the readings on the holidays, and then we're saying the Torah says, "God says, I despise your holidays because the holidays became an abomination." Doing the opposite of what we're supposed to be doing, then the holidays are abomination. My ayolai the Torah. What does it mean? The holidays are a burden to me. It says the Gemara, Amar Kadosh Baruch Hu, will die in Lamu Yisrael. Shafotel and Fon Ayola, Shematrikon Osi Leida, Ezo Gzera Kasha Avilam. God says, not only the Jewish people sin before me, but they harass me to bother me to to waste my time to figure out what harsh decree I'm going to bring upon them. But Tishavav Gufei My Maftri. Now what's after on Tishavav? Amarav Echai Salazona. And Isaiah says, how did this city uh, have became like a harlot? We read this on Shabbos Chazon. But that was the Haftorah, Echai Salazon, that they said they read on Tisha B'Av. Mikramai, what's the Torah reading for Tisha B'Av? Tanya, Acherim Omrim Vimlo Tishmuli. Some say that we read from the Tocha, from the Torahs. Rav Nassim Yosef says, Ad Alina Atzuni Amazeh. You know that where do we read from? We read from the story of the Miraglim because the Miraglim came back on Tisha B'av, or really the eighth of Av, and then that night they were crying. We worried about this Masechah Stanis at the end of Masechah Stanis. They did a cry for nothing, so therefore it makes sense to read about the Miraglim on Tisha B'av. The Eishomer Ma'amosai Wa'ida Razos, meaning to say the continuation of the passage of the spies. I'm Rabbi Ainda. Then Ainda nowadays, the Gamal and Mikre Kisolid Banim Ubnei Banim No Shantem Ba'aretz. That we talk about when you're going to go into the land, you're going to have children and grandchildren who will be a destruction on the land. Maftirin as sofa si fame. And Naftorah comes from Jeremiah, sofa si fame, which is a lamentation of the destruction of the temple. The Ma'amadas, what do we read? What do the Ma'amadas read? The Ma'is of Horatius. They read about the story of the creation of the world. Menani Mili, what's the source for that? That the Ma'amadas read about the story of the creation of the world. Um, Rabbi Ami, um, all in my mothers, because we're not for the mothers when this time with Shemai virus. We're not for the mothers. Heaven and earth will not last. As it states in Will Greece, your man Valaila, Kuko Shemai virus will Samti Bam. If if my covenant day and night I did not create the laws of heaven and earth, I would not will Samti. The Ksiv and it states, My Yomar Hashem al Kim, God says, But my da, Ki Rashen, what shall I know that I will inherit me? Meaning to say that Abraham says to God, Abraham says to God, how do I know that I'm going to inherit the land? How, I'm going to, how do I know I'm going to inherit the land? So, so, so he asks God for a proof. So Amar Avram of Kodesh Baruch God, Abraham says before God, master of the universe, Shem Achaz V'Shalom, Yisrael Chotem Ufanecha, V'Atol Tzalem Kedor Mabok, Dor Fonga. Abraham says to God, listen God, I know you're promising everything to me, but maybe Chaz V'Shalom, maybe God forbid, the Jewish people are going to sin, and then you're going to punish them like you did to the flood. So how do I know my descendants are going to inherit the land? Amar lo, God says to him, lav amar lofanav. Amar lo, lav, God says it's not going to happen. Amar lofanav, Abraham says, rebona shalom, but ma'ida. How am I going to know this? God says, amar lo, kechali ego mishulashis. God says, take for me a calf, take for me a sheep, take for me a goat, cut it in a... <laughs> take, take, a cat, take two birds, break them in half, and walk in between them, and that'll be the sign. 
So that meaning to say, you bring the carbonos. These are all the animals of the carbonos. You bring a sacrifice, and that'll be the way that you get mercy, even if you sin. So it says Abraham, Yeah, that's the case when the temple is in existence. When there's no temple, what will be the sign? So, so God says, I already arranged the sacrifices. As long as you read about the sacrifices, as long as you read the sacrifices, I'm going to view it as though you brought the sacrifices. That's why the most, one of the most important parts of the daily prayers is the sacrifices. We're supposed to read the sacrifices. A lot of people skip them. They, they focus on other parts. But yes, yeah, Shema and the Amida are exceptionally important. But the sacrifices are also a major part of the services because we're giving a blueprint. Now we're going to have a mechila from Hashem Yisbarach. The tiny house on the fast days, we read the brachos of Kalos, we read the blessings and the curses. The aim of seeking the Kalos, we don't stop for the curses. Meaning to say, when you read the curses, you don't stop in the middle of the Aliyah. We know Anamili, what's the source for this? I'm Rakhia Bargamda, Maravasi, Damakra, Musar Hashem, Bani Altimas. Because this, the curses are the, the what are they? The, the Musar, the rebuke from God. We shouldn't reject it, we should embrace it. That's the answer of Rabbi Asi. Mishalki says, no, if you say, no, because you can't stop in the middle, because then you're going to have to make a blessing next time you read it. And it's a punishment, and you can't make a blessing on the curses. What can you do? So therefore, Mishalki says, you start, that's why you start one verse before the curses, and we end one verse afterwards, so you're not making a blessing on the curses. The uh, this we only learned about the curses of Torah's Kohanim, of a Kosh of a Mishnah Torah. But the so there are two places in the Torah where the curses appear they appear in Leviticus in Bukhu Kosai, and they also appear in Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy, in Parshas Kisavo, so, uh, Kitavo. So, therefore, so this is when when we say can't stop, says Abai in the curses of Leviticus in Bukhu Kosai, but in the curses of Kitavo, you could stop. My time, and what's the reason? How old? Because one were said in the plural, the ones in key in Pekosai were said to all in the plural, and not only that, uh, but because they were said in the plural, and 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 so not only were the ones from Deuteronomy, and also the ones in Leviticus, Moshe said straight from God, it's as though God talked through the throat of Moses. But the ones in Deuteronomy, they were said in the singular, Moshe said them by himself. What do you mean he said it by himself? He had Ruach HaKodesh, he had Nebuah, but it wasn't God talking through his throat. So, so therefore, why can't we stop? Why can we stop in the ones in Deuteronomy? So it explains because it's not directly the rebuke of Hashem. So it's, since it's not directly the rebuke of Hashem, it's not disrespectful to stop in the middle. The famous story of the Kozenberger Rebbe was Kozenberger Rebbe made them read the Tohacha out loud and slowly because he says every single line of this was fulfilled you know, through the terrible, terrible darkest days of the Shoah. And now we're waiting for all the blessings to be fulfilled. Levi Barbuti, Abi Kari, Kari, become a gam game. Kame Dravuna, Barure. So Levi Barbuta was reading the, 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 uh, Curses of Deuteronomy, and he was going very slowly. He was struggling with it. So So he was told. So 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 Rafuna said to Levi Barbuta, he says, you know, you could go slowly, take your time, because when do we say you can't stop? Only the ones from Torah's Kohanim, but the ones from but the ones from Deuteronomy, you're allowed to stop in the middle of it. Mishnah Torah, you're allowed to stop. Okay, well, well, that's a good place to stop. Since we just said stop, this is a good place to stop, and I'll be happy to take any questions.